Hey Jeff, welcome so much uh-huh. and welcome to the uh, to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's great to talk with you. Jeff, you are you are one of the uh, few certified enterprise Scrum Alliance coaches, right? Yeah, there there are uh, there are less than a hundred of us Correct. in the world now. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. It'll be very interesting to see, you know, your opinion on um, uh, how you think about the Scrum Master role uh, and where it's going to go. And you've also been a mentor to Agile coaches and and Scrum Masters. Uh, so, so very interesting. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Sure. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it too. Good. So uh, let's start with um, from all the experience that you've seen um, mm-hmm. in, in the Agile space. Um, what what are maybe let's start with what are what are the characteristics of a good scrum master that you've seen what makes a good sure. scrum master yeah so the first i i think a couple things one of them is a real commitment and a passion for creating great teams who can produce great stuff mm-hmm. uh, when i when i go into organizations i train and i distinguish between the roles uh, in the in the scrum framework and I say a product owner is a person who has to be really passionate about creating great products and services for a customer a team has to be a collection of people that's produ- that's that's really passionate about creating great software or great product of whatever or, or whatever that team is focused on a scrum master is passionate about creating great teams mm-hmm that's their focus and um i i I tell people getting who who are looking into be a scrum master especially who came in from other roles that this is a real shift in focus for Mm -hmm. their for their profession their new profession that they're taking on um and the 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 second thing so i I mentioned a passion for teams the second the second thing is is a really a, a characteristic of a great scrum master is somebody who's continuously working on their own self improvement Mm-hmm. The Scrum framework and the Scrum values ha- create a powerful space for how to develop your not only your team but yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, every one of the Scrum va- for values has a set of core practices under underneath that, and uh, the Scrum values aren't just a bunch of you know flighty <laughs> philosophies that you, you come over that you want people to be inspired by. There are a lot of really set of core practices, and it is like learning any discipline. Mm-hmm. Like learning a musical instrument or learning learning some kind of athletic thing or any kind of skill you're taking up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are core practices that you re- really should learn and will spend your entire career mastering at a deeper and deeper level. So that's the, uh, that's the other thing that, that that's really uh, the characteristics of a great scrum master is really continuously refining their craft and being better, getting better and better at being creating great teams. Yeah, yeah. You know, I started this uh, sort of study in January of this year, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a combination of uh, of surveys and and like these, you know, deep one on one discussions. <clears throat> one of the threads that have emerged out of these conversations is the concept of a, a kind of a um, like captain, like a team member's scrum master. You know, like like a captain on a team rather than a coach on a team. So mm. the, the person is actively contributing, maybe in, in whatever way. It may be, you know, maybe testing, maybe analysis, sometimes even development. Have you seen that sort of a scenario and how has it played out? So I'm going to recast that a little bit. Okay. Um, is that <laughs> I really kind of like... Um, Maybe not the, not the cat, captain metaphor, mm-hmm. but somebody who's really there supporting the team in the way they, they need to be supported and they're requesting to be supported. Okay. That's something really valuable. Um, great scrum masters, I think, are very passionate generalists. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, means they, they, that, that means they don't they aren't necessarily they, they, Of course, they all have individual strengths and weaknesses they, that, that they bring out. But they're really passionate about being of service to people 
and to teams in the way they need and request to be services yeah. to get to get service. Yeah. So um, there have been times when I've worked as a scrum master that when I have to get my hands dirty on something technical and I'm able to do that in a way that supports the teams, it does it. Um, in my own background, you know, it's, it's been a while since I since I've really gotten my hands dirty as a developer, mm -hmm. but I do have like, have a fair amount of expertise in in on the database and back end side of things, especially when it when it comes to um to da database design and optimizing databases mm -hmm. for performance. Right. When a team asks that and requests that of me, mm -hmm. I can actually support the teams in certain ways. When I'm working with a team, I want to be able to speak their language and okay. know the things their own strengths and yeah. weaknesses and so I can support them in that way so so it's good you see you, I, I say I, I qualify I'm going to qualify what you said is saying well team member it's it can get really manipulative if, if a scrum master all of a sudden is a developer because you don't know where they where they have to maintain their focus for a while but I should be able to with any team give them the support that they need and request to do it so they need support on sometimes that some could be something very technical mm -hmm. Sometimes it's actually something. Sometimes something very clerical, right, that's, or administrative yeah, that they need. Yeah. But as a scrum master, I have to be passionate about developing that level of generalist skills uh, and knowledge in a whole bunch of diverse areas, so that when I can be called in to support, that I can do it. Have you seen teams where, uh, where the teams have matured? You know, they've mm -hmm. been doing agile or scrum for a while now, and uh, have they ever reached a point where uh, they all know it so well that, that they don't need a Scrum Master? That's very possible. Or maybe they don't need a full-time Scrum Master. full-time. I should call uh, yeah. it a full-time Scrum actually, Master. Yes. I tell, I tell um, in, in when I'm going into an organization and, and helping train and coach new Scrum Masters, I say one of the things that, that is a good sign when the team start getting really good is when you as a scrum master start to get bored. <laughs> um, that means sometimes, you know, after a while, teams are really going to get good at facilitating their own events, facilitating their own planning. Right. Uh, they get good. They start knowing about enough about the organization and the kind of problems they encounter that they can start removing their own impediments and foresee impediments before they come up. So it's a good signal to me if I start to get bored as a scrum master, usually after I'm with a team three, four months or longer, um, that's a good signal. I start to get bored and then maybe I can scrum master for more than one team mm -hmm. or take on some other role. Maybe yeah. I can start coaching other teams and developing other scrum masters in the organization or looking for ways that I can help my current team develop in new ways. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Um that's actually a sign of a team that's really doing well is that they're going to all of a sudden they're not going to need their scrum master in the same way that they were before. And I got to look for new ways that I can be of service. You know how you mentioned uh, how you got started in the agile journey from, mm -hmm. a, from a business analyst. How was your first project as a scrum master? Anything you sort of re remember about that <laughs> experience? <clears throat> well, there was there was a first my first. I'll, I'll tell you two stories. One of them is a team member. Okay. And the other one is a scrum master because I started out as a team member not knowing what scrum is. I was hired into this organization at the time. This was ten, this is over 10 years ago because I had a lot of expertise in the e-commerce area and this mm -hmm. company, consulting company, had a client. Okay. That, uh, that hit me. We wanted to do a lot with e-commerce and so that's how I got hired into this. Um, and Scrum was completely new for me. And it was interesting is at the, at the time when I came into that, I had had many years of working for family owned companies yeah. that looked for me to be the one, the person who would, the Superman cape would yeah. come out and I would solve the problems. And it was interesting up until that time I had been on a 24 by seven pager uh, for, for seven, for seven years. So I had to be super person 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm on a scrum team. So that was one thing that was really disorienting for, uh, to me is, uh, but it's also the thing that really attracted me into it. Mm. 
is all the collective creativity going on. When I when I got invited into the interview for this company, I immediately knew this is what I wanted to do because all the, the collective teamwork that was going on there focused on a solution. But that was really disorienting for me. I really didn't know my place or how to work in a team, which is what a lot of people who came in from bigger organizations or different style organizations, it's a challenge for them. And then with, when a, likewise, we're in a scrum master, and I remember this really distinctly, um, you know, again, I had been working in this organization in, in companies beforehand where I was the one, especially as a project manager. I had to know everything. And, and it was interesting as a, when I was a project manager during the dot com era, my orientation was I have to protect the team mm. from the customer. Right. <laughs> Can't have the customer interrupting the team and having with with all these requests that they have the team has right. to be focused on, on our plan the develop right. the things we're developing <laughs> under the clan and that was my orientation as a project manager during during when i was that during the dot-com era and i remember this really distinctly because i came in on my first scrum master project with this orientation right and we're meeting with the customer for the first time. And I can say, well, I'm, I'm going to be your scrum master. I'm going to person the, be the middle person for all the communication right. between you, this right. and this thing. And I could feel like the eyeballs from the team members <laughs> burning into the back of my head because yeah, they're like, no, no, you're not. You know, this is our customer. We're talking to us and you're to help. You're here to help us talk to our customer. But this is the person we're talking to. And that was a real education for me uh, when I got into all of a sudden. I'm not the person who controls the communication. I'm doing the opposite. I'm, I'm creating more flow among the commu in communication between the customer and the team and freeing that communication up. Mm -hmm. from anything that gets in the way huge orientation shift and that was one of the biggest things I learned when I became a scrum master is I went from a person who's controlling information mm. uh, controlling time and controlling yeah. things to freeing things up to creating mm. flow yeah. and creating space for all kind of these all, all this partnership between the customer and the team and the team and each other yeah you you worked with the with many sort of global organizations, big yeah. organizations. Right? That's 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 my niche. Yes, yes. I'm, a, yes. I'm really the global coach. I think we were talking before we started recording. I'm sitting here in Indiana right now. My yeah. home is in Seattle, uh, but I just arrived on a plane from Singapore today, uh, where I was. And yeah, I've been I've been all over the world even this year already. You are truly a global coach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so. In, in these large, big organization, enterprise level, um, these days, uh, there is the conversation around scaling. Mm -hmm. you know, how to scale to larger teams, larger programs, larger product lines. And in that space, uh, you know, whether you talk of safe or less or enterprise scrum, uh, any of those ones, mm -hmm. uh, the scrum master is still uh, sort of the heart of the, you know, it is still... Your, your agile team still exists. Um, and then you have these bigger roles like the RTE role or the release train engineer roles and these kind of things. Mm. Um, in, in those kind of scenarios, you know what? Uh, do you think that's, that's one of the paths from a Scrum Master perspective to grow up uh, or even consider yeah. to sort of it's grow up? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's without, without commenting on the particular scaling frameworks, mm. um, one of the things, it's a natural condition of working on bigger problems is that you're going to be working working with multiple teams, right? Um, it's just, especially in a big enterprise where um, it's not just the global teams, but you're creating a global product. Hmm, get it, get it. You're creating a product that's used by people all over the world. Right. Um, and so this is a, one of the things that's driven driven the goal or approach. I think you know in the past it was all cost driven. This is different now. You've got you've got or an, enterprises that are really building global products and want to take advantage of their global workforce to serve their global customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, if you think yeah. about it, a simple thing like accepting payment in different countries is is so is so different you know right right 
And, and a, yeah, that's, it, that's really interesting. And I thought I said, of accepting payment in global co- in, in countries. But the other thing is who's buying in the other Can country. I, it's, I, it's one of the things that's fascinated. We're, we're, we're digressing a little bit. Yeah, this I know. Is I know. <laughs> this is a valuable conversation. Um, one of the things that fascinated me from the time I spent in India mm-hmm. is that I could go to the you know most rural community I would even think of, tiny little towns, and every one of them uh, would have a cell phone Can store. I, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. You're everywhere. Yeah. And you know, even you've got people working in the fields um, mm-hmm. yep. that are always in conversation with each other Get it. Get it. On, on their mobile phones. Now, all of a sudden, you're opening up a whole new world where they it's not just conversations, but they can transact with each other. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, cre- it creates a whole new, whole new realm of relationships that we have with each other that I could actually somehow transact and have a have not just a not just a not just a text message relationship, but some kind of a transactional relationship with somebody working in a field somewhere in, in yeah. India. That's a really exciting stuff to, to be able to work on. And that's one one of the things that global that global organizations really want to be able to do and get good together. Um, and, and so um, so kind of back to where we started down this path in terms of scaling. Um, you know, being able being able to work <coughs> With, with multiple teams, maybe scrum mastering more than one team at a time, or work with other scrum masters and still emphasizing the scrum values, right? How do we maintain openness across a whole lot of different teams? The scale, different scaling frameworks offer different solutions to that, mm-hmm. but again, it's a practice as a scrum master, okay. right? A solution, you know, some scaling framework isn't going to offer you the magical, <laughs> the magic silver bullet that's going to solve those problems. Mm-hmm. Openness is a set of practices. And if I'm doing it on multiple teams, I have a few more practices that I have to learn to maintain openness across a whole whole lot of teams. Maintaining, maintaining focus Yes. Across across <laughs> yeah. programs that maybe have twenty or thirty teams associated with that okay. is a whole set of practices and takes skills, and that's a great way to develop yourself as a scrum master. Yeah, uh, to be able to develop that and and maintain those values without just returning without returning it to a bunch of roles. Correct. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Traditional project management has all kinds of wonderful rules and and and, and, uh, and that to follow and tools you could do, yeah. you could use to do that. But it's a whole different realm if you're doing it as a scrum master. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, many companies that start this type of agile journey, they embark in some form or the other on this concept of a community of practice for a scrum master or product owner or that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. What has been your experience? You know, what, have you seen these communities flourish, work? What makes them work? What makes them die? <laughs> well, it's the most valuable thing I did when I was working as a scrum master as a way to develop myself was to go engage in communities mm-hmm. of practice. Um, I was working for a fairly small company at the time, so the most valuable things I do I did at the time was to go to local networking groups, attend a regional conference. There are a lot of regional agile conferences, just maybe within your city Mm -hmm. or within your region you go to. It's the most valuable thing I did to develop myself. When I'm going into a, when I'm traveling to a new area um, and I'm working with people who are brand new scrum masters, usually one of the first things I do is, hey, I, I, I connect with a local networking group, like mm-hmm. a local meet-in group, and I bring those scrum masters along with me to get that into their system right from the get-go, at the beginning of their agile journey, yep. to learn from people who are on the same journey but not in the same organization, to trade those stories and see what other people are doing. Right. Really, really, really valuable. Um, I have seen communities of practice up, uh, that concept applied in really unhealthy ways. Mm. Um, I've, I've seen with a client where 
um, it was they were they were new to agile, and the first thing you know it was like, oh, we got to create communities of practice, right? And the first thing the communities of practice started doing was creating a bunch of whole bunch of ru new rules in the organization <laughs> for how people in certain roles had to behave and the, what they had needed. So that it, it's like anything. Um, you know, you, we put once we I say go talk to other people in networking groups, meetup groups, other your organization. Then we we reduce it to and put a name name on it on community of practice mm -hmm. and kind of objectify that. Then all of a sudden it change it can change into something really unhealthy with a bunch of rules associated with it. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm you know I'm at the client right now and they are in the process of sort of tending up this community of practice for scrum masters and mm -hmm. fairly fairly new to agile but you know trying to get more adoption and enthusiasm in in the other scrum masters so actually our first uh, community of practice meeting is wednesday and see how it goes <laughs> yeah yeah um when i've done this in an organization it's it's, it's funny. I think that the most healthy way of starting in a community of practice is actually using the lean coffee concept. Mm. I don't know if you're acquainted yeah. with lean coffee. Yeah. Um, instead of coming in with a formal agenda, yeah. we got to learn who we, let's learn who each other are as people and what yeah. we're interested in. Right. And lean coffee gives you a great way to do that. Wow. Let's all write down ideas for what we're interested in learning right. in learning about in developing together. Uh, prioritize those and just start talking. Right. And then if something else more formal, we want to take it. We want to take on some kind of another initiative to develop ourselves yeah. in a certain way. Yeah. I've got a lot of tools to do that, but it's a great way to start it off. Is. It is in Lean Coffee, everybody is the same. There's no hierarchy yeah. there. No. Nope. And and so so that's often when I'm doing a new community practice. That's how I started off. Yeah, and that that's that's kind of the agenda for this Wednesday. Right. We have about twelve Scrum Masters in. Cool. So, yeah. yeah, you know, um, anything, anything that we haven't spoken about that you think uh, you would like to share about the future of the role, where it's going? Yeah, I, you know, I'd love to kind of go back to something I said before. Is that you know where, how you engage with the world as a scrum master and how you, the future of a of yourself as a scrum master is really how you take up the journey. Hmm. It's one of the curses of this role <laughs> is that it was named master out of the gate, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, after two days, course, now you're a master at something when really all you did was get two days of instruction and in how to become a master at something, yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so taking that on with yourself, um, you know, I did at the scrum gathering, uh, at the Scrum Gathering in San Diego, which was uh, last, which was last May, yeah. um, I did a session called "Get Yourself Mastered by Scrum," <laughs> which is how to apply how to apply core Scrum practices to your own journey to develop yourself right. in whatever way and whatever you want to yeah. accomplish in life. And I recommend this to all good Scrum masters yeah. that they start do this. That you get right. One of the first things, if somebody, especially say if somebody says they want to become an agile coach, yeah, like, my next question to them is, "All right, show me your back. Where's your backlog? Show yeah. me your backlog." Right. Right. Of how you're going to develop yourself. Yeah. Oh, you don't have one of those? Well, yeah. it's a good way to start learning agile to to aim at yourself and do it on themselves. So it's really, if you want to, there's this profession has grown so much. And it's growing so fast now that it's like, again, uh, you actually don't have to take a course at all no. to become a Scrum Master now. Now I can go online if I go to <laughs> Scrum.org and I can learn enough just on my own and go take a test and become a professional Scrum Master. Or there are other places that will give you a Scrum Master certification for 20 bucks just by giving a shot, right? So this is growing so much in that 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 it's really necessary for you to take on your own journey and develop yourself with this uh, if you want a future as a scrum master, um, you can uh, you you're really not going to be able to make it very long or you'll get a, a lot of low level jobs if you keep yourself at that level. And the great gift of Scrum is that it provides you with the tools to help develop yourself. You it can does. aim scrum values at yourself and develop yourself in ways that you never could have even imagined before. 
right? I couldn't have even dreamed this, you know, the fact that, that I'm talking to you in Minneapolis, me in Indiana, my home is in Seattle, <laughs> and, and 48 hours ago I was in Singapore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is which is something I couldn't have even dreamed of when I took on this journey ten years ago, but it's where Scrum led me. Are you jet lagged? <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, this. It, it's hard to say. Yes, I'm probably jet lagged. It okay. was a really. It, it, it should have been. Uh, the yeah, it was. There were a lot of delays coming home. Okay. And so the entire journey took 40 hours uh, to get from Singapore here to Indianapolis. <laughs> and so it's, you know, what is it? It's probably 6.30 or 7. It's coming up on 7 o'clock. Yeah. Or, sorry, coming up on 9 o'clock p.m. Yeah. where I am sitting now. Yeah. And my body doesn't know where it is. Um, <laughs> usually, yeah, yeah. Usually, it's interesting for the, the the flips from one side of the globe to the other are not that bad on me. It's mm. the three hour switches that are bad. But I have no idea what's going to happen today. I did come home and sleep for quite a while because I slept very little on this forty hour journey. Wow. So I slept a while during the day today. But we'll, we'll see. We'll have to see what happens. Right. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. th thank you so much for jumping on this call. For having I really me. appreciate it. It's been a great conversation. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You take care.